Besedera there from St. George Light. Let's uh, straight away bring in Simon Boltum uh, from Aqualis with me in studio. Simon, welcome to you. Uh, Besser making the point just there on the participation rate, uh, but for there being fewer people out there uh, firing off their CVs, uh, we would have seen a, a tick up in the unemployment rate. You with her on that? Yeah, I think that, that was a, that's probably one of the shocks in the, not shocks, but one of the interesting trends that we're seeing here. Participation rates are always going to be an indicator of, I guess, the uh, capacity in the workforce, um, not necessarily job seekers. So it's consistent, though, with what we're seeing in the job market at the moment. Mm. And is that down to any one particular sector? Is that, if anything, more accurately put, uh, highlighting the two-speed economy and maybe uh, ex-mining, uh, the confidence levels have actually fallen, not risen? Um, I think it's caution rather than sort of at this stage disappointment. So mm. as, um, as was said just then, it's the not, under, not knowing what's going to happen next. Organisations are cautious, um, hiring decisions are taking longer or even not being allowed to happen. So we are seeing headcount freezes with some clients. Mm. But you know, again, December was a strong month. You know, the figures at Aqualis were good. We had an increase, interestingly, in the temporary and contract market. Mm. So we are seeing organisations where permanent headcount's not certain. They will then look at part-time or temporary people. And yet that number on part-time's actually gone back by 53,700 with a build in full time. So is that reflective of you know, the numbers you see there? Are you seeing eye to eye with them? I think what's happening is, Carson, mm. temporary and contract or part-time roles are now being converted into permanent jobs. So the two do run parallel, and I think that the contract and temporary increase that we've seen will convert into permanent jobs down the track. But this cautiousness in hiring decisions means that you can kind of sit on the fence, not sure, let's bring them on to contractor, maybe they can temp for a while, mm. and then normally within a three-month period, they can convert them, all things well, being well, into a permanent employee. All right, let's keep you on this discussion, but let's also bring in uh, a panel to augment it, Fred van der Tang from Randstad in Sydney, as well as Peter Gleeson from Charlotte McLeod in Melbourne. Gentlemen, welcome to the debate. Peter, uh, uh, to you first in Melbourne, just from what Simon was saying there, maybe March begins to settle down a little bit after the uncertainty of Christmas and then the spillover into the new year. Are you reading too much into these numbers today or just uh, putting them slightly to one side? Well, um uh, Happy New Year, Carson, mm. and to the rest of the panel. Uh, here we go again. Mm. Um, another decrease following on from November, and in fact the trend throughout the whole of the six months. And uh, I think, let's put it in context, if we compare it to the same six-month period the year before, then uh, we've had a very average employment time uh, during the last, uh, the last six months. I think that um, the part-time decrease is very indicative of people saying, well, that's it, I can't get a part-time job when there's normally plenty around in December. December is normally a very good month for part-time hiring. Mm. And uh, I think the uh, uptick uh, in permanent, remembering that it was significantly downsized uh, permanent in November, is probably a reflection of a few companies saying, well, look, we better secure some resources for next year. Uh, and some permanent hiring decisions were made on, on that basis. But overall, um, you know, not a really great result at all. In fact, we found it quite a uh, challenging month in December, although there was a degree of permanent uh, hiring. In, uh, overall, we still have this lack of confidence and uh, you know, basically employers have got to start making some decisions about whether they're going to do anything this coming year, the year we're in. What is your hunch about what that will ultimately come down to? What's going to be the confidence kicker or the confidence booster? Yeah, well, I think it's actually uh, finally some Australian uh, business uh, uh, leaders making some decisions. I mean, we've recently completed a, uh, the Chan McLeod uh, bar workplace barometer and 97% of people said that they felt that uh, there was going to be uh, you know, hiring coming up. They needed to be flexible in their approach to workforces. They need to do something. But 87% said they thought they'd have trouble finding skills. So they've actually got to start making some decisions and just get on with at least uh, you know, that part of the business they feel they can focus on and, and make a difference in. Uh, don't just take the less risky areas of their business and uh, uh, you know, build up for those, I think. Just make some decisions. Fred van der Tang, let's just stay on that for a moment. Just flesh it out a bit more if you could. I'm still struggling to see what decisions it'll, co it'll come down to, to either build that full-time component still further if Peter was saying it was slightly shaky on and a disappointing for December or if anything just uh, more of what we're seeing here which is a bit of a as, as he says a, a lackluster trend yeah hi Carson uh, I, I hear what you're saying mm. um, 
For, for my part, I think uh, the trend in December is always an awkward one because of the seasonality influence. Clearly, some of the traditional part-time sectors like retail and tourism have been a bit slower. All right, well, let, let, let's forget December, even, a, even if that sort of can be done, because we are on these numbers today. But let's take a bigger picture for people. Putting December, the volatility, which is like a broken record for people, let's cast that aside. What is the landscape looking like? I think it's all going to be about confidence. Uh, confidence is what we need. Confidence is why, the lack of it at least, is why banks uh, don't have to give out a lot of credit and they are reducing their jobs, as you know, that's been widely published. So the, the, the trigger, the kicker for people to start hiring larger amounts of permanent jobs again will all be about confidence. So that's order books being filled up, that's uh, consumer confidence rising, spending rising. And as long as that's not happening, and I don't think that uh, you know all the all the big publicity in the media right. about the things that are happening around the world help here, I think well, it's going to it's going to still be shaky. And for that reason, and we know in our research at Rancid shows the same, mm. employers are looking to uh, boost performance and productivity. And for that reason, I do think that uh, this will be a year where flexibility will be very right. important, with lots of contracting and tamping being used in a structural way and not always flowing into permanent roles. Peter. Uh, Peter uh, Gleason, we'll go back to you in just a few moments' time. But uh, Simon, back to you in studio with me. Just on this idea of understanding a build now of 24,000 in this volatile month and moving into January now where we find ourselves, what in a normal healthy environment would, would the balance look like? Balance of what, Carson? Well, the balance of full and part-time. Yep. If you were saying this is a, a sign of an economy that is sitting pretty, what should the split be starting to look like? Full versus part-time. That, part that part-time employment would increase over this season, you know, holiday mm. period, Christmas and so on. Um, the permanent increase is interesting. Mm. But I think that is down to some of these converting contract decisions, converting temporary decisions. But again, I think we do try and bid ourselves up. 95% of the population are employed. You know, these figures, when compared to the UK, to the US, they're, they're very strong figures. Mm. So, well, can you compare the two economies? I mean, one, in fairness, is just you know, hell bent on prudence and on uh, really taking the axe to spending, whether it's the public sector, which would counter cyclically pick up from where the private sector is mm. not hiring. We're not in that same situation. Our budget deficit is hardly crippling us. No, and I think these job losses as well, when we look at mm. where they're occurring, it's the banks. We hear about the banks making cuts, the banks moving people, mm. financial services people's jobs are in danger, overseas banks that are making decisions in New York or in London mm. uh, about organisations here. Um, it's still not big job losses being seen in some of the other sectors. Where, where, if not today, then when do we see that unemployment rate tick higher because of that? Well, with the, I mean, the large numbers being banded around already, mm. um, you know, thousands of numbers, thousands 7, of 7,000 over two years, UBS. So yeah. unemployment will rise. I think that's, um, that's undeniable. I think as that sector shrinks and as that sector gets smarter about where it puts its people, that will be reflected in a slightly higher unemployment figure. All right, let's get more just on that thought before we have to kind of break the panel apart. Fred van der Tang from Randstad to you back in Sydney. Just on uh, the, the, the sectors to now be watching for uh, perhaps the trigger for an unemployment rise, are you saying it comes down solely to finance or it's more broad based where the layoffs will occur? Um, I think the banks and finance are so much in the public eye, Carson, that they will play a very big role both in real terms and also in symbolic terms. Mm. I mean we all know that mining and resources are continuing to boom and the skill shortages in the hiring is continuing there. We see that uh, professional services industries are diverting their attention more and more to that sector as well and of course banks will try to uh, uh, pick, their, pick their benefits there as well. But I, th I do think it's down to banking and finance because the rest I think is pretty uh, bare already in terms of efficiencies and I don't expect many more moves there. All right, let's just get a final thought. Uh, th this moment before we take a break, back to you Peter Gleeson from Charlie McLeod in Melbourne. Just on this idea that uh, the previous month's revision, uh, notably on that point, um, seeing that unemployment rate slip to five and a quarter percent, does that add any strength to any particular argument? No, look, I don't think so, Carson. Mm. I just think that's a bit of a vagary. Um, I think the preemptive uh, movement of the banks 
you know, these major reductions is a very serious concern. The bottom line is, as uh, both Fred and Simon have uh, indicated, uh, that actually does lead to a lack of confidence. And uh, I think there's a number of areas that uh, we're seeing some growth in, uh, you know, IT, uh, professional services, as Fred mentioned, mining, um, stability in a number of areas uh, uh, like utilities and, and the like. But I am concerned uh, the government sector seems to be wavering a bit, which is a little unusual given we've got struggling, you know, at least lack of confidence in economic times uh, and also uh, education uh, as well. So uh, the other area that is, is, is probably got some signs of growth is in the health area, uh, which again is indicative of people uh, not feeling as well about themselves, not being as well, mm. uh, taking themselves either off the market or not trying as hard and needing health as a result. So uh, it's a real potpourri and it's going to be a very difficult year to predict, but I, I'm normally very optimistic. Mm. I'd suggest to you the caution is uh, still needed and of course that leads to the lack of confidence. So we'll just have to wait and see. Peter, wait around a little bit longer if you could. Fred, I want to thank you, Fred van der Tank from Randstad in Sydney. We'll take a break. So Peter Gleeson returns. So to Simon uh, Bolton from Equalis and Katie Dean from ANZ. They had that job series to kickstart the week. Job ads. Uh, what's her reaction? Find out in just a minute. Welcome back. If you just joined us uh, to remind you of the news uh, to the minute on jobs, we have seen a surprise move to the downside uh, on both the unemployment rates, five and a quarter percent, largely driven lower by a fall in the participation rate. Those out there looking for jobs are on the split between full and part time work in December, uh, a rise of twenty four and a half thousand full time positions, but uh, an oversized shedding of part time roles uh, to the tune of fifty three thousand seven hundred. Uh, that November employment rate's been revised uh, downwards by 7,600, triggering as well that revision back to five and a quarter percent. The Australian dollar falling below uh, the 104 US cent mark where it had been uh, finding itself on this news. And uh, just to give you a current read to the minute, uh, I can tell you it's uh, fetching 103.99. So just slightly uh, failing to bounce back at that measure. Broader markets for you. There is the gain, three-tenths of a percent. So markets themselves uh, getting out of the starting blocks, gangbusters this morning, up over eight-tenths of a percent, but then starting to just pull back. And indeed, that is the trend that only continues this hour. So you could say moving in lockstep with that move lower for the local unit, the markets uh, appreciably softening, although still remaining in the round positive. Well, a key part of the setup to today's numbers was that ANZ job series, which uh, came at the start of the week. Katie Dean from ANZ now live for you from Melbourne, plus the rest of the panel, uh, Peter Gleeson from Charlie McLeod and Simon Bolton from Equalis. Katie, to you, uh, fresh into the discussion, welcome. And just to reflect now on that fall you saw at the start of the week in your series, putting it alongside the sharper than expected falls today, how do you react to them? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, look, uh, the, the fall that we did see in the ANZ job ad series at the start of the week did unfortunately signal that we were going to be in potentially for a, a bit of a, a bad number today and that is exactly what we got. Uh, what we saw in the job ad series was that uh, the number of jobs advertised in the month of December fell by 0.9% but that in trend terms it had actually been negative for about seven or eight months suggesting that employment growth was going to start to slow substantially. What was particularly interesting interesting out of the ANZ job ad series was that we were seeing strength in uh, job advertising in uh, the resource rich states, say WA, Northern Territory, Queensland, but th this was being offset by weaker jobs growth in the more populous states such as New South Wales and Victoria and that's certainly uh, what has started to be pan out in uh, the labour force data officially. So today's uh, employment drop uh, certainly does appear to have been led by weakness particularly in New South Wales and in particular in uh, the part-time sector. That to us is telling us that uh, tough times in uh, seasonal industries such as retailing and hospitality are not enough at the moment, oh, well are being overwhelmed sorry at the moment by, um, well they are overwhelming sorry, um, sh continued strong uh, demand for labour in the mining states. But not overwhelming them sufficient to see the unemployment rate tick higher. 
No, look, that's an interesting quirk of the data and what I think is really worth pointing out here, Carson, is that the ABS in their media release today have signalled that there was an unusually large drop in employment for women um, aged 15 to 24. Now, that is telling you volumes about uh, demand for labour in the retail industry over December, which of course is normally a seasonally uh, very mm. strong month for mm. that sector. Uh, what we tend to see is that those people are fairly marginally attached to the labour market, that is, if they can't find a job uh, then they're not actually going to be uh, look actively uh, continuing to look so they fall out of the labour market they fall out of the participation rate calculations as a result and that is what puts downward pressure on the unemployment rate so I think we need to be a little bit careful about that fall in the unemployment rate today uh, probably do need to pay a little bit more attention to the actual headline employment numbers you could argue that that is just a, a bigger picture story that reflects the demise of Australian retail relative to its online competition and yet if you take that online story Katie in terms of job ads as you yourself pointed out at the start of the week the online component was weaker but newspaper the old hard copy was actually firmer how do you understand yeah, that, that? that was an well, that was an interesting point, but I think that what we're seeing in uh, in that uh, split between internet and uh, newspaper job ads, Carson, is that most of the strength in uh, newspaper job ads, in fact all of it, was in uh, the mining rich uh, states and territories, Western Australia, Northern Territory and Queensland. So they now, can the they have been a little to slower. Sorry, I'll just in other words. Carson, yeah, please, please, carry they on. They have yeah. been a little bit slower mm. than uh, the, uh, the larger states uh, to uh, uh, move towards advertising on uh, the internet so it's actually a bit of a structural change that's still occurring in that form of advertising which is why uh, weakness in uh, in New, S New South Wales and Queen and Victoria is actually probably overwhelming uh, the internet series at the moment so you would expect the migration you're saying that's perhaps set to start if it hasn't already uh, and that and that mismatch won't necessarily mark the series uh, in the months to come uh, I didn't quite hear all yeah. of that question, but mm. I, over the next couple of months, what we'd expect is uh, that we'll probably see continued strength mm. in uh, in these smaller uh, states and territories, uh, and that will potentially start to, to feed through into internet job ads. But uh, for the moment, uh, the the weakness mm. in New South Wales and Victoria is dominating that segment. Simon Bolton, come in on this one, just as a setup to today's numbers. Are you? finding any fault with the ANZ series just from a philosophical how do we get to where we get to uh, uh, start? Who am I to challenge a major financial institution but yeah, I think there is some um, no one's adding got up gospel <laughs> truth but carry on. Adding yeah. up the number of job advertisements mm -hmm. online I think has some risks I think that you know you've got to look at which jobs are actual jobs um, you know lots of these jobs are done by recruitment firms um, lots of these jobs don't tend to necessarily be live um, positions that they're working on you know, bear in mind that job boards sell um, a space on a contract to advertisers. Um, so you know, that figure does have an underpinned by a, you know, a steady number that organisations have to keep going. And this is where print media is often more directly advertised by employers. Um, we're seeing that uptick of 3.5%, bid in WA or bid anywhere. That's Are you saying phantom jobs might be advertised simply to meet a quota? No, no, I'm saying that the, co the mm. contracts demand that you do have a certain number of adverts that mm. go on. Okay. So it's, uh, just adding up those numbers every month doesn't necessarily, I think, give us a key indication on where the market is heading. Katie Dean, how do you respond to that? Uh, look, what I would respond is that if you have a look at the Internet Job Ad series uh, and the Total Job Ad series, which is Internet plus newspaper, track that against actual employment growth, you'll find a very close relationship. Mm -hmm. We've got Michael Blythe, though, our Chief Economist at CBA, Katie, saying this is a confusing mix. It doesn't give any clear read on the labour market at the end of 2011. Well, that's uh, because it's uh, providing a fairly... Uh, that's because newspapers were down and uh, internet was up. I, what we uh, argue and certainly what we demonstrate in our analysis is that if you have a look at the total series, i.e. internet plus newspaper, you get an extremely close relationship with uh, employment trends, but also mm. in particular the RBA cash rate. So we encourage uh, analysts to look at that total uh, measure, which was down 0.9% for the month of December. Katie, hey, just a thought on rates, the link here, it would seem if uh, the, the retail confidence uh, has been affected to the extent you have suggested it might have been here, with women in particular, uh, what of those two rate cuts that went through the system towards the end of last year, what impact did they have on reflection? 
Well, I guess that's what we're waiting to find out, aren't we? So the, the jobs data is suggesting that uh, the official ABS data on retail uh, sales for the month of December could be quite poor, um, suggesting that perhaps households initially at least have looked to save uh, that those, uh, those uh, benefits to their income from lower interest rate cuts um, as opposed to actually spending them. It may also just simply reflect, Carson, this structural change that we're seeing. Households are spending more on services around other than uh, the traditional retail uh, goods. Katie, value those, those views as always. Thanks for coming on uh, with your insights, putting into context. Peter Gleeson, Chairman of McLeod in Melbourne. Just a thought from you now, uh, really what employers are telling you might be uh, for them a trigger to, to reverse course and get that confidence back. You flagged it earlier, but having had some more time to ponder that one, um, what's your conclusion? Well, I think a couple of things, Carson. We've talked so much about confidence. That, you know, we've probably overdone what makes confidence. And I think some return to uh, you know reasonable results would be a, would be a good start and a help from their business partners in and around the banks and the like. But if I could just make a quick comment on the, the ANZ job numbers, I'd yep. just like to say that um, you know, advertising is only one part of the methodology normally found for finding people in the marketplace, in and around networking and uh, referrals, uh, database, etc. Uh, if it, it, it's not a surprise at all that Western Australia and Queensland have got uh, higher advertising rates. The bottom line is, the harder it is to find someone, and we know there's huge skill shortages in the mining and energy sectors, uh, then the more likely they're going to go to every possible way of finding candidates. So they will advertise, and I think that probably indicates why the more expensive, but sometimes, um, uh, shall mm. we say, uh, attacking okay. that passive marketplace in the printed media has come back a little as well. Um, there we go. All I, right. Understood, Peter. Thank you so much. Simon, last you. word on you, and appreciate that. Just tell me, when will we see unemployment ticker? Which month? Quickly. March. March. That's the call. And that is our show for today. We'll hold them to it. Thanks for your company, Lunch Money, next.